Hello everyone, so today we will be presenting the mathematical approach to Lewis dot structures. I'm Hadil Darwish. And my name is Heidi Mohammed. And our mentor is Dr. Kayoglu. So the main purpose of this project was to uh, find an alternative way, uh, a mathematical way to draw Lewis dot structures, which a lot of students find challenging in their general chemistry courses. Yep. Okay, so the main, the simple rules that go along with this is that uh, you can't have any long pairs on carbon except for carbon monoxide. Uh, second period nonmetals uh, can't expand their octet because of the octet rule. And uh, the least electronegative element will occupy the central atom position except for hydrogen. And lastly, oxygen cannot make more than four uh, bonds with the central atom. Okay, so the formulas that you use to solve this, the first one is the lone pairs formulas. To calculate this, you have to subtract the valence electrons from uh, the multiple of uh, eight and divide by two. The valence electrons are the electrons in the outermost shell of the atom. And the second formula is the number of bonds, and you do this by dividing the number of electrons needed by two. The numbers of electrons needed are basically uh, how many more electrons? First, you have to look at uh, an atom, for example, nitrogen, which has five valence electrons. You have to know how many more it needs to complete its octet, so it would need three. And lastly, the double bond equivalent formula is an already existing formula, but we made our own adjustments to make it fit this approach. So you have carbon minus hydrogen and halogens divided by two plus uh, group 3A and 5A elements divided by two, plus one and plus and minus the charge divided by two minus the noble gases. I know it's like a really long formula, but it's definitely worth it because this is a completely foolproof method. And uh, you skip columns to your 16. And for lone pairs, you don't do the lone pair calculation, the one in the previous slide, for columns one, two, three, and 13 and 14 and you have to account hydrogen for seven in the formulas. And this just shows you uh, what everything stands for in a molecule. And Z represents the charge of the ion. So you have two different cases. If uh, 2M is greater than or equal than N, you have central uh, atoms bond to one another. And the lone pairs is equal to the number of bonds between the central atom. And if 2M is less than n, you add one, uh, the number of the bonds to obtain an isomer. Okay, so this is the oxygen rule for uh, molecules and ions with one central atom. So if you have more than four uh, oxygen, like in this example, so you one of the oxygen bonds to another oxygen that's bonded to the central atom. So in this example, the fifth oxygen is um, bonded to the oxygen that's bonded to the central atom. And this is the oxygen rule for uh, molecules with two central atoms. So in this example, if you have uh, an atom with two, uh, two central atoms and an odd number of oxygen, uh, the oxygen connects the two central atoms and the rest of the oxygen is distributed symmetrically. But if you have uh, two central atoms and an even number of oxygen, uh, both central atoms uh, bond to each each other and the rest of the oxygen is distributed symmetrically. So this is an example. So in the xenon trioxide, uh, first I calculated the balanced electron. So xenon is in group uh, 18, so it has eight electrons. And we have three oxygen and each uh, oxygen has uh, six, six electrons, so the total is 26. And then I calculated the number of lone pairs. So I did that by um, subtracting 26, which, which is the valence electron, minus 24, which is the highest um, multiple of eight. Uh, that's close to 26. And I divided that by two, so it's equal to one. And I calculated the number of bonds. So I have one xenon. Each xenon has eight valence electrons, so it doesn't need any electron but uh, oxygen has six electrons, so each oxygen needs two. So this is equal to six divided by two is three. And then I calculate a double bond, and I don't have any double bonds, so 
I did this one, so it's one lone pair and three bonds. And this is just a guide to the, uh, our mathematical approach. Thank you.